as well. And you don't have the best of hold from 496. You've got the call. You've got Winter's Curse, maybe the shotgun from the Morphling. None of them are really instantaneous until the Winter Wyvern gets Aetherland's Blink to maybe get that curse off on the puck. But there's a lot of opportunities here for Alacrity to just pop in and out with the orb, harass the back line, maybe just hunt that Winter Wyvern, take it out of the picture. 496, do you go for the Hoodwink? Looking like that is our pause. Four, we've seen a lot of Hoodwink, and it has been fairly effective. My issue with the Hoodwink in this lineup is that it still doesn't fix their control issue for the puck. Like, Bushwhack is a great spell, doesn't really lock in a puck all too well. It's more like a follow-up stun, maybe after a call, maybe after the curse if the puck is not if the puck is not dead, you can kind of play with that. It, it does play really nice with the AoE control that 496 has. Winter's Curse clumps him up, uh, Axe Call clumps him up, so the Bushwhack follow-up is going to be great. It's a free five-man stun coming out if all of that lands. A lot of things have to go right for that on 496's end to get that done. GXR! Good news, get John. The AA with it. Yeah? Uh, I, I was going to let you do the whole draft just because I thought it was hilarious, but I have fixed it. <laughs> it's, been about a, it's been about a minute since I fixed it, so I, I thought I'd butt in and just, you know, just tell you that, you know, it's all fixed. I know how much you enjoy talking, John, but, but you know, we've got to <laughs> shut you up for a second. I've got to get some time in too. So the Venomancer comes out for GXR. You know, I'm liking this draft, John, from 496. I realize you've, you've got this problem with the puck not being controlled. I agree with you. I think mm -hmm. there is going to be some control issues here with this puck. I suppose you've got the curse, you've got the call, you know, you pointed out the bushwhack as well, but it's still a puck, it's still very, very annoying to, to land any of those abilities apart from maybe the curse. Uh, and overall, I, I think I have to agree with you that GXR with their draft, it does just look a bit better, doesn't it? I mean, even even with the Morphling pickup, I, I realize the Morphling's viewed as a, a counter towards the Terror Blade, and we, we tend to go over this every time we see this matchup, but terribly, just looks too good now. Yeah, in, in this current meta, I don't really consider Morphling so much of so much of a counter anymore. In fact, I'd maybe argue Terrible could be the counter to the Morphling. You can take the meta from the Terrible, which is great. But then Terrible eventually he's going to build up that Eye of Scardi. Once that item's up, can you fight anymore? Yeah, he's going to have the Manta for the shotgun, so he's able to evade the shotgun blast from the Morphling. He's going to have the Eye of Scardi later on. You're going to have the lockdown with the Puck and the Nyx Assassin. And then you're probably going to have a Spirit Vessel there as well with the Venomancer. It's already looking at like a very, very tough game for this Pos 1 Morph is what I'm trying to say, John. So I, I don't really consider the Morph a counter towards this TB this game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's iffy. We've seen the matchup multiple times, as you mentioned. Um, I think one more thing to consider as well is that... With the changes to Morphling's attribute shift, a lot of people were saying initially, yeah, it's not too big of a deal. I think with the rise of Nyx, it is a big deal. Like, mm. you just don't have the mana pool anyway, even outside of Scotty and Spirit Vessel, to just attribute shift around mid-fight. You're not going to get as much HP because it's tied into your mana pool. Nyx's mana burn is just going to make that a lot tougher as well. So I, I think you've got the tools here on GXR 496, and they've got the flexibility, though. They can still run Morphling mid, Axe off, pocket their uh, safe lane last year and it looks like that's what GXR is assuming they ban out uh, they ban out Jug they ban out Lifestealer uh, big heroes with spell immunity that would counteract the Venomancer to a certain extent so they just kind of want to secure that off lane Ooh. GXR do pick up the Bane to close out their support duo here Bane Nyx that is not a very common support and not one we've seen at all I mm. think it's it's a great way of holding down a Morphling though like, you already have some decent control from the Nyx Puck, but this Bane is like your instantaneous control. Stay out of sight, get the grip off, or at least get the Nightmare to set up. Everything else can come afterwards. So it's kind of great in that sense. It's just out of meta oh. for good reasons. And it's... a whole 496. <laughs> they, uh. they, went, they went down this route. They got the Wind Ranger up. Let's see where they lane everyone, right? It's, it's hard to... It's hard to just kind of call it out. Uh, we'll see where they where they intend on laning this Wind Ranger, but it does seem like it's going to be a mid Wind Ranger coming out here. I want to go back to the Bane for a second, John. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Bane was one of the heroes that just went unpicked during the uh, the TI qualifiers. So it's very surprising to me that during our first series, our first game of the series, we're going to see a Bane pickup here for Polison. Do you 
I mean, it, it is quite strong into the Morphling. Like, it's a really nice way to lock them down. Even the Wind Ranger or, or even the Hoodwink. Just great ways to lock these heroes down with the Nightmare or the Fiend's Grip. Any other re reason you really see it here? Like, Enfeeble's kind of nice as well against the Morph, I suppose. Do you, do you see a big reason for this Bane Pickup? I think it's just a hold. I think they didn't want to really greed out by having, say, a Nyx plus Lion or a Nyx plus Shadow Shaman because you do need some farm to get those heroes up and running. The Bane has really good laning presence that you have to contend with. When it comes to the control aspect, I feel like you really lost out by losing your range talents, though. Uh, Bane was one of the heroes that really got uh, shanked by that. It, it doesn't feel as amazing. Aether Lens plus a neutral item is still good, though, so you can still get some range out of that. Um, I think I think they're just playing towards that pacing they want here, and it allows you to set up for the Venu uh, Gale in case you can't really land it with what you have on hand, so you can kind of set up for that in some of these team fights. It gives you a good way of just, again, mainly the Morphling, catching out the Morphling. It looks like they're just kind of worried about that. You can use the Nightmare to save as well, so there's a little bit of a saving utility now from the Bane in this lineup for GXR, and we'll just have to see if they can maximize that. Again, it's uh, been unpicked for very good reason. Oh, it's down to GXR to show us why this is a good pick again. Yep, fair enough, John. We'll get into game one, and of course, before we even start the game, let's have a look at the uh, the loop at betting odds. Seems as though GXR are going to be the, I'd say, heavy favorites. I mean, it's 1.4 to 2.81 right now, so it's not, it's not quite as heavy as it was maybe before we got this draft started, but it does still heavily favor the side of GXR going into this game one. Do you think you agree with those odds, John, from Lupe? Yeah, I, I'd stick with those. I think GXR is just a lot scarier for team. Their recent results, especially outside coming out of those tier qualifiers, are really great. This lineup's played together for a lot longer than 496's lineup has. And 496, it's a bit of a test for them. I mean, they've got Ohio. The Vietnamese stacks is mixing in with international players again communication is going to have to be on point to maximize to the, that experience they have from ohio so we'll have to see if 496 can hold up to that i want to go back to the point with a bane i think maybe it's really just down to enfeeble it does give health and regen reduction now at 60 percent max so yeah if they really are worried about that morphling shifting around that is one solid way to stop that even the healing from that winter wyvern's not going to feel great if they've got enfeeble on I mean, the thing is, it just felt like they didn't need it, right? Because you've got the Venno, mm. you could probably buy a Spirit Vessel, and on top of that, once you have the Skadi on the TB, you're not really going to need the Enfeeble, but if you wanted to literally make it so he's morphing nothing, then I suppose why not, right? Like, you just make it literally so he can't gain strength with Enfeeble, plus the rest. I mean, it, it could be quite busted, but for now, Polison, he's going to go for the standard Brain Sap build. I've, paid a, I've played a lot of Banger, and I've got to tell you, the hero doesn't feel good right now. So I'm very <laughs> curious to see what Polison does with it. Yeah, it's uh, going to be an interesting time. He, I mean, he does have In Your Dream in the lane. Uh, we'll have to see what In Your Dream does. Level he's holding off, whether or not he wants a Metamorphosis or Reflection. Does go for the meta first. They're up against Red in Ohio on the Axe Hoodwink lane. This is going to be a bit of an annoying lane, especially for Polison. He's just going to get constantly poked away by that Battle Hunger. He can kind of heal back with a Brain Sap, but he gets damaged more than he takes. Uh, than he gets right now so it's going to be a slow process in healing up that way in terms of harassment and ohai is doing a fairly good job just zoning him out he's got decent range he's got good damage with acorn shot a little bit more spammable for ohai as well compared to paulson brain saps 120 mana for 75 damage it's just not amazing value compare that to acorn shot 75 mana for a bonus 50 damage on top of your attack so it's pretty darn good in terms of mana value there that's a fair call john you see Polison already going for that, uh, that small camp pull, and he's going to get it. We'll have a look at the other lanes while we have a chance as well. Of course, mid lane, you've got Hung Hung there up against the Lacrity, so the mid Wind Ranger into the mid Puck. It does feel like this is going to probably favor the Puck in this matchup, but at least for now, Hung Hung is going to find himself ahead in terms of CS. Do you, do you agree with that sentiment, John? Do you think the Puck should have the advantage, or does, does Hung have it on the Wind Ranger? I think there's a couple of things going here for the Wind Ranger that you can sort of abuse. It's mainly down to Wind Run. Um, if you can land Harassment and Power Shot, that's great as well. But you have to really use Wind Run to its max potential. Dodge out the right-click trades. Uh, try to avoid getting hit by the Orb. If you can kind of do it that way, the Wind Ranger can hold its own. And for Alacrity, lagging behind like this, not too bad. It's 
still the first couple of waves, so you're really not missing out on too much. Where it really shines for Puck is the mobility. Windrun's great and all, but it's no illusory orb, and that should lead to Alacrity maybe looking for more aggressive power runes down the line. Heck, maybe even sniping a uh, bounty rune if he does want to dive that deep later on. Oh, fair enough. Of course, last lane, bot lane, we will see Joe Cam and Mizu against that baby in Port Gasty Ace. Uh, for now, Ace, he's not having the best time in the world, and yeah, it's never fun playing against the Pos 3 Venomancer. Very, very annoying kind of hero to play against during that laning phase. Uh, Mizu already picking up that urn as well, so we do expect that he does go for the Spirit Vessel, which is, it, it only makes sense. You're up against the Winter Wyvern, you're up against the Morphling, just so much value with that Spirit Vessel pick up here for Mizu. And of course, he's going to have Jokam there as well. And well, Jokam, he's going to try and not soak too much XP away from Mizu. But rather, you just try to get the pulls off. Try to keep the, the creep equilibrium going your way and let the Venomancer have as many levels as he can get. Yeah, and it's already a great lane for Mizu. Uh, Port Gas is not getting as much CS. They got the pull off in the side camp. Range creep's still alive, so you don't get as much out of it. But you managed to deny a majority of that wave, so it's still a good amount of EXP taken away from the side of 496. Uh, that BB did manage to get his own pull off, but the small camp just isn't as great. And eventually that wave might just stack into a double down the line, so it's still all good here for GXR. Chocam is doing a fantastic job of giving that solo EXP away. Still hits his level 3 timing at a good point, and once you do have, say, 111 or 201 on the Nyx, you can kind of look to play aggressive. Uh, Mizu, he's got two points in the Gale. If you get the stun into Gale, that should be a fair, relatively easy kill to lock in. Absolutely. Top River, Ohio. He did get the water rune away from Alacrity, but he's going to lose his bounty over this. Meanwhile, bot lane, Port, Ga Port Gasty Ace. He ends up losing his Morbid Mask, John. He's on the courier and was sniped by Joe Cam on the Nyx. So very unfortunate there for our Pos1 Morphling, who kind of relies on that to be able to stay healthy. And just go to the jungle if he needs, but well, that's going to be delayed for another minute. That's a pretty big win for GXR. First Blood hasn't been found yet, but they're slowing down the pace of this Morphling in a big way. 17 to 3 in CS. Compare that to Terra Blade at 26 to 5. The TB tends to farm a lot more efficiently towards that mid game as well, just because of how his illusions work with Conjure Image. So you're going to have to watch yourself. 496 can't afford to lose this much out in lane. Yeah, I mean, this is an in your dream Terra Blade, don't forget as well. Like, this is one of the man's specialties. In fact, bot lane, as we say that, Mizu does end up going down. So they do secure First Blood, which kind of may counteract everything we just talked about with this Morphling in his farm, John. He got the First Blood bonus gold, so definitely great news now for the side of 496. Meanwhile, top lane looks like we are having a bit of action as well, but it's just going to be Red chasing down the Bane with the Axe. Still very good news for 496 to secure that, that first blood on their morph. Yeah, and that's that's the one thing 496 needs to do every single time. When they see the Nyx go out of lane, they need to bully out Muzu as much as possible. They do manage to land a combination here in Port Gas, but he's morphing just fine here. Yeah, there's nothing to really slow him down. They are at least going to force him away from the lane, but he does have that morbid. Oh, wait a minute. There's the cold embrace coming out. They got the stun. He is quite low in strength now. In fact, he has none left to throw out, so they're going to go all the way past the tier 1 tower, and it looks like they've got him. Well, there you go, John. Sometimes it's just about continuing the chase and, and not giving up. Yeah, it, it was a deep dive. It took them a lot longer than they'd like, but it also gives the creep wave a chance to push in a bit. Siege creep was up. Two range creeps, Radiant's decent damage done in that bot tier attack. one. And it kind of makes up for giving out first blood. You know, just killing that Morphling off is always good. His Morbid Mass was coming in, as you were saying, just not in time. And that is still a good time for GXR. Like, even with that first blood given away, compare that to how the top lane is for GXR. It's just so much freer for IYD oh, and Red. Yeah, top lane, Red. Stuck around too long, got a bit greedy for that large camp. And of course, Alacrity will just punish immediately with the puck. And I've always liked the way Alacrity plays the mid lane. He he doesn't play that farm heavy kind of mid lane. He's always looking to make those rotations and create space, uh, and that he does at the top lane. Now you've got to you've got to kill on the axe. Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah. It's just the activity coming out from Jutsar is a lot better compared that to what 496 is trying to do right now. Like Hung can't really rotate all too well. He doesn't have the javelin up. He's just tower. trying to clear out camp so. They're going to try and go into In Your Dream. Ohio and that baby are around as well as their Wind Ranger who's coming in, but they're going to lose their Winter Wyvern. A nice call in from Red, however. They'll lock down In Your Dream and now the Bushwhack into the power shot. 
very nicely played by the side of 496. Mind you, it does take them four heroes to rotate to make that happen, but they do get the kill they wanted. Yeah, it's a nice win, relieves some of the pressure on red and kind of gives them some space to breed as well. Just losing out on your chair blade is not amazing for GXR. You are starting to compensate for a little bit of space on port gas down, but they can't quite transition that to a push though. Red's twacking away by himself, but the damage he acts itself does on tower is not particularly amazing. Eventually this tower should fall if GXR doesn't toss the heroes up to contest, but it's, uh, it's fairly okay for GXR at this point. Level seven on the Terra Blade. He's got level four illusions, level three metamorphosis. It's jungle time for IYD anyway. Radiance courier has been killed. And that baby's gonna lose his courier this time around. Not too big of a deal, just a few wards off for the Wyvern on there. Red, looks like he wants to go for the dive onto Polison, and he might just be able to get it as the Call and Bushwhack does both come out at the same time, but now Alacrity, another nice rotation. Polison gets the Brain Sap off, but it is going to die still. Joe Cam now will come in, and if they can get the kill on the Axe, it's going to still feel like quite a nice trade, as they will be able to pick it up on the puck. You lost your Bane, but you, you got that big Red Axe. It won't bother you too much. However... In the meantime, Portgas, he's been pushing in that mid-tier 1 tower. They did cliff it up though, so he couldn't really get much damage onto that tier 1. Yeah, it's uh, it's time where Portgas isn't really able to play in the jungle going for bigger stacks or more camps at the same time. And it does expose him a bit on mid. It's only the supports down here from GXR, but they've left their bot lane free. So they've tried to push in mid with a Morphling, that's free space, for the Venomancer bot to start spamming his wards out, looking for that push on the bot lane and the Venomancer pushes a lot quicker than an Axis push. You can clear out waves and apply good damage on tier 1. So 496 has to make a choice. It looks like they might just be willing to start to sacrifice that tier 1. No one coming in yet. They've got the wards to watch when heroes come in and they know In Your Dreams playing in that area so they might just go for that safe top trade in the end. Yeah, I mean, this is a nice play by In Your Dream, right? Like, he's just going to get the tier 1 tower. He wants to farm around this area anyway. However, rotations perhaps from 496. No, it looks like Ace is just farming around the area, but he's going to be very careful. They will not be able to land the Nightmare there with Polison. They do get a Coil off onto the Wind Rangers. They've got a big target here if they can try to burst her down. She's been silent stumped, but there's your Nightmare out. Into the Impel from Joe Cam. However, the Cold Embrace hung. He's going to be alive as Pork SDAs. Oh, that Sharpshooter just barely off the mark as the Power Shot. Not going to land either Alacrity. He'll go back the other way, but now Red going for the chase. Orb through, salve up, and they can't kill him. Alacrity's out, Scott Free. But so is Hung. Neither mid laner dies. So everyone gets out just fine. Yeah, I think that's a little bit wor more worrisome for 496 as they just lack control. They need a call, they need a curse to really come true to hold something like that puck down. And when neither of those are up, and when you don't have the levels in your Winter Wyvern, you just can't fully commit on Alacrity right now. So you have to choose a different target to jump. And that does waste quite a fair bit of time, but GXR is using that time a lot better. They're farming on that opposing jungle anyway. They cleared out the camps. IYD just goes back to his triangle and plays there. The side of 496 still have to find a tier one trade. Red is still shoving in the top by himself, but again, Axe push is just not that quick. That certainly isn't. Very, very slow process here for him. You will have Ace and that baby now making their way up though. So you'll have a bit of help coming in now for Red. It looks like there won't be any form of a defense coming in from the side of GXR. They're just going to let this one go. He Polison's around, but obviously as the Pos5 Bane, he's not really going to be able to do much. Instead, GXR, they've been trying to apply pressure in that mid-tier 1 tower with the Siege Creep. However, that is going to be stopped as well by Hung. They can keep trying, I suppose, as Alacrity does move up with Mizu now. But you've got plenty of heroes around to try and defend this. So I believe they will just have to let this attempt go, and instead... They'll try to re-engage uh, re into their Radiant's jungle. The Joe Cam with the Vendetta now is going to look for a nice target, and he's spotted out Red. But Red just running away a bit too fast. They've read the movement of GXR. They aren't going to lose anyone. There's a ton of sentries from 496 just on the ground to watch those invis rotations. Joe oh, Cam! Ace just barely going to survive Joe Cam. He tried to go for the snipe. It was definitely a very nice attempt, but it was not enough. As Red lets him know about it as well. You deserve nothing, he says. <laughs>
that is one thing you have to watch out for. I figured he might have walked into sentry range, but there were no obs to spot that out. So, uh, unfortunate there for GXR. Very fortunate for 496. GXR, though, still playing much more aggressively, still taking over that bot jungle. Game. Oh, Hung, he's been caught out. A nice fiend's grip, but do you have the follow-up damage? The orb, it's going to fly in. Alacrity, he should have enough with the dream coil and the waning rift, and they'll get it. Paulson, he'll take the kill with the fiend's grip. But it's well worth the time invested here for GXR. And now they could definitely start applying pressure into that mid-tier 1 tower again if they so wish. And it looks like Mizu has already started slowly chipping away with those Serpent Wards. Or rather, Plague Wards. I, I, I guess yeah, they're the they, same thing. Yeah, they're, they're all kind of annoying to deal with as a support. They're all kind of, you know, a nuisance. So it does make sense as they shove in that mid... 496, they're just so limited in map space. They're forced to respond to this. They've got three, man, three people here. They've got the curse. That BB could line up for a very sick setup for the call here if you can. I really like the fact that In Your Dream continues to join for these tier 1 pushes as the call blink was not there, Red. He got it cancelled by the Venomancer and now the Cold Embrace does fly out In Your Dream. He's going to kill off Joe Cam, but they may get hung in response as Hung. He's going to try and run with the Wind Run. And nice shackles as well, but In Your Dream's not done yet. Hung will turn around for one last power shot, but he is going to die. And they got that tier 1 mid tower very easily. Overall, GXR coming out on top once again. He's red. He's going to cop a Gale there from Mizu, but that's going to be about it. Just a very annoying kind of presence here from our Venomancer. It, the map is just going to shrink from this point. They've lost two tier ones, bot and mid. Opens up their bot jungle entirely now for the side of GXR to keep farming around. Whereas 496 are still really relegated to their triangle. They don't really farm this top jungle too much. The mid tier ones still stand, so they can't really foray into the further part of that jungle as well. And it just limits who can farm. Right now they're prioritizing port gas. He's trying to save up for the E-Blade. But going for the E-Blade first without anything stats-wise or defensively means that he will be very vulnerable to the hold and the damage output of GXR. Top lane red could be in, in a lot of danger. Alacrity has got the Dagon up with a Hastrud and the Coil and they're gonna go right in. Spike Carapace is set up there by Joe Cam. He's got some help around to try and save him, but no. Not with the Dagon up on Alacrity. There is no time to help out red. And this is getting very, very concerning now for 496 because they've got this timing with this draft that they should have been able to hit by this point, but it's been looking very rough, John. Every engagement just goes the way of GXR. And this is making a lot of space for In Your Dream. And you know In Your Dream, on this Terror Blade, he is going to outfarm pretty much any other player if he's been given this much space. Oh yeah, and I love that GXR immediately smoke as well, they're hunting. Oh, Ace, no, he waveforms away at the right time, but Polison, he has the Fiend's grip. He's gonna go after Porkas, and he's found it. He does have the Strength Morph going, but he has lost all his strength now, and could still be in danger. Bushwhack is there, Cold Embrace the boot. They'll get Polison down with the power shot. Can they keep going? Sharpshooter does connect with the call out red. He'll give the kill over to Ace. So it does all turn around as now Joe Cam. He'll be chased down by Hung Hung. They'll try and find him. However, oh, Joe Cam, that's a little Ooh. bit sneaky. The arrows do fly in the shackles. It does land. They got vision just for a split second. And with the focus fire, it was more than enough to give the vision over to Hung Hung to get the shackles in time. Yeah, Joe Cam played pretty greedy there. He didn't walk up to stun either the Winter Wyvern or the Morphling as the TPs came out. He tried to stun both, and he ended up missing both. So they missed out on the kill opportunity, gave a ton of time for 496 to regroup, uh, get themselves in a good position to get that curse into the call. And that's what we were looking for from 496. If they get that control onto Alacrity, with this kind of build up on the puck, he doesn't have anything to save himself as well, at least not for a very long time here. Certainly not. You still got in your dream though. That's really all you need, right? You just need that terrible late to farm and. I mean, look at that farm, John. He's already 3k ahead of this Morphling. Uh, if that doesn't concern you, I don't know what will. It's not like Morph's a Flash Farmer either. He, he, it's quite a slow process for him. Oh, yeah. It's just worrying how much IYD is allowed to go. Like, every single time, Portcast is forced to actually join these engagements away from objectives and all. 
Cheeky little nightmare there by Polis, and they're just trying to get some D wards out, but Hung gets a shot. Oh, that's a very nice shackles. It lands on both of them. Mizu, he'll go for the poison nova. He's done his job already as Joe Cam. He'll sneak in from the backside, but he's not getting any kills going as they will just continue, though. Hung, he does drop to the Dagon of Alacrity. And so in the end, it is still a very nice trade for the side of GXR. A pause three for a pause two. Had they not lost that Wind Ranger, they would have been very, very happy. But unfortunately for uh, for four nine six, that is not the case. Yeah, it's uh, just really uneven. And look at GXR and just posturing around mid still. They know they've got the jump, they've got the control to keep going for those kills while still buying all the space in the world for IYD. Like no one has bothered to check on this terribly for the past five to ten minutes now. Just left a free farm and. If 496 doesn't come up with something, this 3k network gap between the TB and the Morph, it's just going to get worse, as we've been saying. I don't see any immediate item pickup for Portgas to fix this. He's got the E-Blade up. Great. He needs something defensive now to protect himself. Interesting. See what he can do with the shotgun, though. I mean, he's got to get something done. I, I don't think Ace wants to go back and farm right now. Like, it, it does feel like 496 should probably go for a big team fight with this power spike. They even got the blink up on Hung. Just on the courier right now. They may not be feeling so confident to try and fight GXR though. It does feel like GXR's just had their number every single team fight. And speaking of GXR, John, they look like they're the ones who's gonna be the aggressors here. Because they have popped the vendetta on Joe Cam. They're gonna look for another target. And long behold, who's it gonna be, John? It's gonna be red again. Poor old Red in that same area. Looks like he has been scouted out. Joe Cam is going to see him, but a quick blink away, and they will not be able to catch him. Or will they? Alacrity, he's got another haste rune. That BB, he's going to be around with Ace. They won't make the jump. In fact, Red, he might go in first. Ohio has shown up as well. They'll get some D wards out as Red. He's going to start moving forward. Alacrity, Ooh. he's going to be in with the coil now. He's caught too, but the shotgun is there. Alacrity, can he survive it? It looks like he'll be all right. As nobody's died quite yet. Very close call there for Alacrity. But he does not quite go down. Both teams, once again, are just going to back off. GXR re-smoked, though. They did just pop the Dream Coil, so they're not going to have that control. But it looks like they're just feeling confident, knowing that the E-Blade's up. They know what they've got to watch for, and they can maybe prioritize someone else and jump here. Well, they see red. Red is going to get Fiend's Grip. There is going to be a Bushwhack to help him out, but they've already got the Silence there as well, and they've got the damage. Ooh. Nice Winter's Curse, though. They'll at least get Joe Cam, and now a double Shackles out. But have they got the Puck? Yeah, they do. Alacrity. He does go down as Mizu. He does have an Aeon Disc, but it's not going to help so much as Polison. He tries to run, but here comes in your dream. Ooh. He wants to go for the fight. He's found that BB, and now poor Gas D Ace is just gone. Hung needs to run. He's going to try. As the Shackles Ooh. does land. That's the one big problem, though. In fact, they even found Ohio. Oh. Mizu got him. And as soon as In Your Dream shows up, everyone just tries to scatter. But only one gets out. Yeah. The, the insane thing for GXR is when they play four, four versus five, that's them playing on even network. Like, all this lead on GXR's end is basically just In Your Dream. Farming like insane. Everyone else is pretty even in terms of net worth across both sides. Maybe you're lagging a bit behind on Red's axe, but he hasn't had too much space. So the fact that GXR has been taking these fights 4v5 is, and kind of winning them out without In Your Dream is already impressive enough. Once In Your Dream comes in, even if he's down two teammates, it doesn't matter. He's just so strong. He's got that Scotty up, he's got the Dragon Last, and SMY. He's got a ton of HP, and you can't stop this guy right now. Well, you certainly can't. Maybe you could stop Polison, though, who does get caught out with the Sharpshooter and the Call. They will be able to at least pick up a pause 5 kill as Alacrity. Oh, Alacrity, no, you didn't. He got Ooh. Ace along with Misu. Hung's gonna try and punish him for that, but they've already lost the Morphling. That's a real disaster for the fight for the side of 496. They get a POS 5 Bane, but then they lose their POS 1 Morphling. Just, just, you can't win if you're 496. They just keep losing every single trade. Yeah, it's it's a tough spot to be in, but it goes back to just having the shotgun first Morphling in this game. You don't have anything to protect yourself from the silences, from the stuns. If you had a Manta, you know, you wouldn't have that burst damage, but you could at least remove this 
the silence and kind of shift some strength around if you're caught off. Not quite the case. You're still going to have to wait for that build up here before you're ready to go on port gas. BKB is coming up next. It's still a long ways off and GXR, they're just posturing for more tier twos. I mean, why the hell not? They found that BB on the Wyvern. He's not going to die quite yet, but Alacrity is known to be a guy that doesn't like to give up, but he's not going to have the damage. One more hit would have done it, but he just could not get the vision. Instead, they'll go back for that tier 2 bottom tower, like you said. And it's going to be uh, very easy pickings. However, 496, they're going to try and rush the Roshan. Scan is out. Can they make it in time to contest? They'll bring in one. Who's it going to be? It's going to be in your dream. He's running right into this. There's your reflection out, but the Aegis is already taken. They'll still go for the fight, though, Red. He's already been lost as poor Castillace has lost half his HP. He's going to try and run. Just strength morph up and try to find a way out of this team fight. But in your dream, no, he'll go after the T1 top tower as Joe Cam. He'll continue the chase. Ace is going to be careful. Reflection is still up again. Alacrity gets the silence off, but he doesn't have the backup. Coil's there. Shotgun will save for a second. As oh, Polis, and he got the Nightmare, and they've got the Fiend's Grip. And with the Spirit Vessel on I have Scardy, the Strength Morphing just won't matter. He could waveform out, but Joe Cam's waiting on the other side, and no, they've got the silence. It's just so one-sided of a matchup right now between these two teams. Is that BB? He tries. Aeon Big just is going to save with a Nightmare as well. They're just going to save the day. GXR, 11k net worth lead ahead. What do you do, John? Terrorblade at 16k net worth. Literally double the net worth of Port Gasty Ace. Oh, yeah. It's... I know what you can do. Maybe 496 can start to just focus on the high ground defense. Hope for a big Winter's Curse to come true from their Winter Wyvern and play around with that. Get the call off, get the follow up bushwhack. You can really play in that way. And in that sense, the team fight's good. Hung. Although, Hong. He's going to try and go in. They've got the sharpshooter, so Mizu should die here. But now Joe Cam, he gets in with the Yule Scepter. There won't be a follow up. Meanwhile, Bushwhack does catch out another. They've got Polison. He'll try to run, but it's looking no good for him as Red does catch him out. But now the Impel is there. Alacrity, he's going to re engage in this team fight. There you go, that he found Hung. He got the backline Wind Ranger. And he just blinks out with the Dream Coil now. Is it, you found Pos 3 in the Pos 5, but you lost your Pos 2 again. It's not so bad this time for, for 496, but it's still not great. Nah, it, I'd say it's still pretty bad. I think the one thing for 496 correct now is that they lost Aegis early on last time. They need to play high ground. They're finding some kills, but sacrificing their Wind Ranger, who really needs some farm at this point. Like when you're running a core Wind Ranger, you have to get those items flowing in. You need something else to come out besides just the BKB Maelstrom. At this point in the game, 25 minutes in, your team's behind. You need something for the Wind Ranger here. It's oh, it's going to take lane. a while longer. Oh. At least they might be able to find Joe Cam. It's not the most impactful kill, but it is a kill. And they'll take whatever they can get right now as the Bushwhack does land. And they should have enough to get the dunk off. Very nice setup there by Ohio and Red. So they get something off the map. But it still doesn't solve this massive issue of this Terror Blade. Who now has an MKB, by the way. Yeah. Just uh, takes away any sort of safety net for Hong. He's not going to be safe in the win run. I mean, he's already not safe because of the magic damage coming through. He's, he's got to know when to pop that BKB as well. 496 are still playing below. Ohio and Red still hanging around. They seem to have an idea, though. Alacrity is just constantly scouting the trees. What do you worry? Doesn't spot them. Poor Gas. Oh, poor Gas. The Fiend's Grip again. Miz is going to be there with the Vessel. The Shackles may save his life. Poor Gas. He's going to be able to wait for him out. Just barely, thanks to the Shackles, is hung. Does finish off the kill onto the Pain. Like, it gets very scary when that Fiend's Grip flies out. It's just so hard to survive. And it also goes back to that Enfeeble as well. Like, it's a level 2 Enfeeble, but it still removes a lot of regen as, Ooh. my goodness, Red. Alacrity just solos him. It's a level 4 Dagon he's got up. It's just that easy for the puck at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm just so curious about Red's axe. Like, early on, I think he went in lane. He started out with a very early Ring of Health and Ring of Regen. And then he rushes the Blade Mail first. They're going in for the call utility, the call damage. 
coming true, but he has no durability at all, though. They've got a nice target, Alacrity. He's been caught out. Finally, they get a big one, but Joe Cam is going to sneak up from the backside. They know he's there, though. The sentry is going to scout him out, and they even connect the dust as that BB. He might just curse him to set up. They need anything they can get right now, but no, they'll use the shackles. They'll be patient, and Hung will get a double. That's what you love to see from 496. We need to see more of that this game. Yeah, they managed to get some good punishment onto GXR. GXR, for their part, they're kind of playing split up. They're being a bit overconfident with their puck. They don't respect the shackles. They're sticking by the trees and not respecting the bushwhack as well on top of that. And when you don't have any defensive items on your puck, you can't really afford to go that far in. Maybe once a BKB is up after Dagon 5 or even just a Lincolns would pop the cause here, that would be enough for the puck to be safe. But you do have to watch out. Like, you know that Man. the side of 496 are all just pumped up here. If they grip him again, Red's probably going to be dead. He's trying to run, and he's got no vision on the Bane. Instead, who have they found? The high ground? Nobody. Nightmare's there. They've got the axe held down with the Gale out and the Enfeeble. But no, they won't use the grip. Well, let him go. Do you see how much damage was dealt to poor old Red? Just with that Vessel and the Gale and the Poison Sting. And John, I'd, I'd hate to make matters worse for 496, but in your dream has a DD bottled up, Mel. Yeah. Beautiful. Everything you could ask for on that pause one TB. Um, GXR in that fight, they were splitting focus. They were trying to chase that BB on that high ground a while ago, so they couldn't really hammer in either one. Policy. Bit of a chase down pot, Mel. And Shackle's not going to latch. Fiend's group's going to be committed. He just wants to try and go for this killer's Joe Cam. Does show up, waiting out the BKB, which is about to wear off, but not quite yet. It's a nine-second duration. It's the power shot is off the mark for Polison. He is still alive somehow. Ooh. Hung just can't finish the damn Bane. Ohio is going to show up as they found Alacrity. A massive target, but in your dream, he's around the area Ooh. with a nice thunder round. However, they lose Polison with the Winter's Curse. Do they want to keep up this fight? Alacrity with the coil out. They'll go after the Wyvern. Red Meanwhile, we'll try to run. That BB still alive with the cold embrace, but probably not for long as he does drop. And now Red, he's stuck in the tree line. He'll try to make a way out, but it looks like there is no way out. He's out of mana. He's just going to have to accept the fact that he's dead. And no meta's even been popped. Yeah. In your dream, sickest save this game so far. That Sundry just keeping Alacrity up and running. And that's going to enable them to go high ground. DD still halfway through. Probably not going to get too much value of that with the meta. But 496, they're, they might have to commit some buybacks. Issue is, they don't have the curse up under Winter Warrior. Oh, shackle. That's a great shackle. Bushwhack is there. But do they have the damage output? Or the sharpshooter doesn't connect on in your dream. And you said there's no value, John. He's got about 800 damage right now on the TB for a split second. And you see that tier 3 tower? It just melted. He's not going back in now. Tier 3, just about a drop. Porkas, he'll morph into the TB, so we, he will have a meta available. They will manage to protect that tier 3 tower for now. This GXR, they're not going to go for the rush. They're more than happy to just wait out the satanic of the In Your Dream Terror Blade. And of course, you've got a Roshan that'll... It should be respawning rather soon, at least within the next few minutes. So you may as well just set up for that. Yeah, no rush here for GXR. All Outer Towers have been gone for a while. It's on 496 to really take the initiative. They need to punish GXR for splitting up and get something. Preferably, maybe even take that Roshan. A minute and a half until the respawn is fully up. 496 has some time to regain some ground. Uh, they have cleaned up their tier 3 items. They have gotten more for themselves here, and that should give them a couple more tools. BKB is up and running on port gas. This is when the Morphling feels a little bit more durable up front. You're not going to be immediately bursted down by the puck. You've got a way of getting that silence off. So port gas now has one tool to get in the fights. Now it's up to GXR to be patient. Paulson needs to be able to pop that Fiend's Grip on the right target and not get cancelled to hold back those BKBs. That's kind of where I was going as well, John. I, I thought maybe he would have opted for the Lincolns or, or just get a Lotus on another teammate, but never mind that, because the Spike Carapace is there. Red, he couldn't get a great call off. Joe Cam, Aeon Disc going to be procced. Arrow in the backside, Alacrity trying to blow up Ohio on that Hoodwink, but he can't quite finish the job yet. A nice Shackles there, Hung. He locks down Alacrity, and now the Winter's Curse is there. Aeon Disc, it may save Mizu's life. Power Shot is not going to do anything. They found a massive puck kill for the sake of Ohio's life. 
with that, they are going to be able to force back the side of GXR. This is pretty good time for 496 to take that fight as well. Roche respawn in about 9, 10 seconds. If they did figure that out oh, and no. go Roshan now without the oh, no. be awkward for GXR. Oh, Impel does land. Polos and he's going to get the Fiend's Grip. Han's got no help around him. And there's another DD rune as the Roshan respawns. <laughs> Perfect. The GXR just DD on demand. Full Satanic up in your dream, sitting at a pretty 3.4k HP. They are going to check with Jokam, it looks like, and Mizu. They should figure that is up, and they can just go for it. Two heroes down on 496's side. Uh, in your dream, should start making his way down there. They've got the Metamorphosis ready. 496, they can kind of play in the pit. They can blink call, they can try to curse. They've got the bushwhack as well from Ohio. They just need to be ready for that engagement as GXR are just likely to get this, get the free Ag Shard, get the cheese, and look for that high ground again. It's going down very fast and that BB, uh, he's been caught out. This is the, the one hero you don't really want to see dying before the Roshan goes down, but he is well and truly dead. And now that contest of the Roshan pit just looks that much more challenging to the side of 496s. I believe they're just going to have to let it go. I, I don't think you can contest without your Wyvern, let alone not having Hung Hung there either on the Wind Ranger. That's going to be a full Shard's Cheese and Aegis though. Meanwhile, on the bot side of the map, well, they at least get their, uh, their outpost back. Cheese has been left in the Roshan pit as well. Polison will go ahead and, and pick that up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things. You're fully slotted up on your TV. Don't really have room to shove a Radiant piece of cheese on your pocket. With the side of 496, 16k behind. High ground is still really strong for them. But they have to deal with two lives on the Blade. They have to deal with the Demon Zeal on In Your Dream, which we don't get to see too often. Um, very rare we see that up, but should be interesting to see him get that added move speed and added attacks. We're going to help him the siege here. And that gives him more damage as well in melee form. So you have to be a bit cautious, Dyer's Joe Cam. Oh, no, not poor Cass. Not Ace. Not again. Joe Cam, he's looking for that impel. Red's going to be around to help out. Ooh, but a double oh. impel does land as well. Reflection there. The BKB <laughs> will do nothing. And that's what I was talking about earlier, John. It's either Lincoln's or your teammates get a Lotus. But BKB, it doesn't feel good. Not in this matchup. Now hung. Needs to be careful because Alacrity is looking for that coil and he does get it. A BKB out from Hung is going to save his life. They do get a bushwhack as well on Mizu. But it's not going to lead to much. Yeah, and that's still a good time for GXR. You know, the Wind Ranger BKB is down for a minute. They can go for the high ground push. You are creep cutting here on red. So he's going to cut off one wave and maybe slow down the push. It's not going to be enough to stop it. There's still a creep wave coming in mid. And it's still the creep wave down bot as well, though. Focus fire on the Nyx Assassin. Aeon Disc is going to proc, but Joe Cam just walks out. You hit with the Sharpshooter as well. In your dream, meanwhile, he's just going after the racks. He does not care whatsoever. It's Bushwhack, it'll drag him back a bit. He's got the Aegis up, he's got the Satanic. He's feeling very confident. He's not even going to need to pop the Demon Zeal, John. Just straight up hits the racks, takes it down. He could go for the mid-high ground if he wants as well. It, it's really up to GXR how confident they feel. With the 21k net worth lead, I'd say they should be feeling very confident. There you go. He pops the meta now. Double Siege Creep Wave as well. It's going to be a very easy push unless we get a call in the backside. It's just not going to matter though because Hung's gone. Tips out from In Your Dream. Is there onto the mid-tier 3 tower? <laughs> Buyback committed by the Wind Ranger, but... What can Hung do here? It, it seems to be very dependent on landing a big call or shackles. And even then, I, I highly doubt they, they even have the damage output as red. Has been vesseled up. Joe Cam's just going to rush straight in. Goes for the Vendetta Strike. Gets the Impale off. And they just blow him up. Dagon there. In your dream, he hasn't moved. He's just hitting the mid racks. Yeah. He has no reason to care. They take two racks for free. Axe, no buyback. 496, I mean, they've got the curse. Something big. I think it's really down to, uh, to that DB more than anything else. He has to find a way to reach that back line with his blink, get a good curse off, and kind of break up the fight for 496's side. They're fighting on the side. 
Lacrity forcing the uh, the Ghost Scepter out from our Morphling. Meanwhile, in your dream, he just keeps up onto that tier 3 top tower. They just want the Megas. That BB in position gets a decent enough curse off, but the Nightmare's there from Polis, and it's going to mean they get nothing. I think it might be about that time to call it. They might go for one more team fight, but it's not looking great as the Shackles is there from Hung. It's a big, big Shackles. They might find Joe Ken, but no in your dream. He saves the T again, and now the Fiend Grip is out. They found Hung on the Wind Ranger. He can't go anywhere. He'll get caught and braced up, but it won't matter because the Terror Blade, he just gets the work. Ace is in, but the GG's been called. They've had enough. A one-sided matchup for game number one between GXR and 496. And I've got to say, John, it wasn't even close. It was a tough time for 496. They started with the Axe opener with a Winter Wyvern. They flex the Axe onto the off lane. They take this mid Wind Ranger safely in Morphling. And it, it just doesn't match up. GXR had the lineup to sustain their Terror Blade. They had a highly mobile hero in that puck. They have... They had great lockdown for the Morphling as well with that Bane. It really just came down to the fact that the Bane could just play so quick, look for the Fiend's Grips from the Fog once that Aether Lens was up, and just kind of hold down uh, Port Gas every single time. And 496, I think some of it's down to draft. I mean, they allow the Terrorblade to slide through. Terrorblade's just such a strong meta pick right now. Yep. Uh, Morphling not as much, and... The the axe as well wasn't feeling great. Like Red was forced to go for Blade Mail first with Blink, but he had the items for, say, a Hood of Defiance early. I think if he went for something with more tankiness first, build into the pipe, you might have actually been able to hold off because GXR was mainly playing with magic damage without in your dream. So some itemization choices, some hero choices as well for 496 and draft just kind of falling flat. And we'll have to see if they can correct that. Otherwise, GXR might have a smooth ride in this series. Yeah, I mean, just before we go to break, if we compare Poz 1s right now, and your dream finishes with a 33k net worth, Ace 14k. That, that's, that's the difference. And I, I think we talked about it in the draft before we got into the game, but I don't see Morphling as a Terrorblade counter anymore. I, I think it's the opposite way around. I think the Terrorblade actually does a better job at dealing with the Morphling. Nevertheless, we are going to go into game number two very, very soon. It is a best of three series between 496 Gaming and Galaxy Racer Esports. And of course, it's MLP, Dota, and Genex Fire. We'll see you in approximately 10 minutes for game number two's draft.